Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. It's morning time. It's coffee time. I haven't been up very long. Honestly, I don't get to sleep past about 6 or 6.30 lately because the cats wake me up. We have two cats who are very quiet and they're not aggressive about their food. And then I have two who are hungry all the time. And I was gonna go back to sleep this morning, but then I just couldn't, I was awake, I was already awake. So I got my coffee and I came out here to the workshop. I am still working in this glorious journal that I love so much. This is uh, the Old Curiosity Shop journal. And I wanted to just turn the camera on and show you some of the things that I've done uh, since I was last recording and maybe just keep it on while I do a little bit today. Okay, let me slide this book back. There's a lot of mess on this desk, but that's okay. Uh, what I was working on just before I decided to turn the camera on I had just put some music paper on this page. Uh, I finished up this page last night and it dried overnight. Uh, one of the things that I have decided I really like to put uh, between the boxes or around the boxes is black acrylic paint. This is actually Sharpie, uh, but I do like the looks of the black acrylic paint. Let's see, this one is paint and I had to wait for that to dry this one is paint. So let's get back over here. Uh, I wanted to put this card down. Let me listen to me and not to them. Gertrude Stein. And I was going to, I, I love that there's music paper behind this because it's headphones and it's talking about listening. But when I just put it down like that, it seems too hard for me to see this. And I was trying to figure out a way to maybe put some color behind it and make it pop, especially since I've got so much red in this one. I like that okay. I was wondering what it would be like if I cut a diagonal here and then moved, like put part of it here and part of it here. I don't know that I've ever done that. And it might, I might not, I don't know. Let's, I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna see if I can manage to get a straight line. Plus, I like this writing down here. Uh, it kind of adds to what's going on. Now, that's kind of interesting. I do like that. So that's a little idea that you can use, especially if you want a, um, a color that complements what you're working with. Maybe the back of the card could be some sort of, almost like a photo corner. Sorry about the noise from the air conditioning. I just realized that that has been running the whole time. And I always try to turn that off. Um, I just don't always remember. And you know what? In order for this to be on the page like I want it to be, why don't I go ahead and do this? Maybe push that down a tiny bit. Okay, and now let's just glue the rest. I hope everybody is doing well. I do have to go to work today. I love my job. Uh, I don't mind going in at all, which is really nice. It's nice to have a job that you feel that way about. Uh, I love being in the workshop too. You know, when I was just here with this as my full-time job, I looked forward to working every day as well. But uh, this is a nice mix, you know, being able to go somewhere that I really love and then being able to come here. Let's push that up a tiny bit. I like that. Okay, so we've got that page. I may come back and add something, but for now, I'm just gonna, going to, <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it like it is. Let's see, let me turn the page and show you 
some of the things I've done. I glued this down yesterday because it was wanting to stand up. I had originally used some of the just plain white glue with the cover and uh, the tacky glue is so much better. I did this yesterday. So one of the things that I found recently is just some, is some sort of plate. It almost looks like it goes on a computer, maybe over where the fan is. Not, doesn't have to be a computer, but any kind of electrical thing where you want a filter behind it. I don't know, that's what it made me think of. I just put that down to make a very faint pattern with some staining. So it's, it's really faint. It almost reminds me of a beehive, and then we have the plant here. I haven't done anything here yet. Uh, this is another page that I worked on yesterday. Put all of my little trinkets and pictures down and then glued them and then came back with the Sharpie and went around the edges. The Glass Jug Beer Lab, Durham, North Carolina. I happened to have two of those, so that one's there. Uh, this is the page we were just looking at. This is fun. This is a label that came off of a box and it just looks so industrial. Definitely wanted to leave that. There's a piece of ephemera and just black and white images. Jay, this little uh, character here came off of some happy mail you sent to me. That was on one of the books and I just love the red there. The stamp is a little bit pink, but I decided to go ahead and use it. I like the way it looks there. And we of course have this. Let me just flip. Now there's I know I mentioned I was gonna start working from the back of the journal so that it didn't start to, the whole journal start to curve too much in one direction. I've definitely had that happen before. So I haven't done a lot of work. And this is a lot of pages. I'm telling you, you can start with 20, 25 pages and feel like that's not very much. But when you start trying to decorate every single page, you're talking upwards of 80 pages. This I love. So this is from an 1894 magazine called The Cosmopolitan. I've had this magazine for years. I bought it years ago in a thrift store. This had gotten the, the front and back cover, and I did take pictures of this and put it on my Pinterest page. Um, the front and back cover, you can see it was falling apart uh, more every time it was handled because it had just gotten really stiff and would just crack. So I decided to put it in this journal uh, after taking pictures. There's no sense in having it just fall to pieces and not getting any use out of it whatsoever. So I love that it's got that red and black and that really beautiful old like brown or tan, uh, brown sepia, I'm not sure. So this is a pocket and I didn't like just the plain white underneath. So I took part of that 1986 newspaper I had and put, you know, cut a piece to size and put glue on the back and carefully slid it all the way down into the corner. I really like that. I may leave that just like it is and put something fun in the pocket. In this page, we've got, um, there's a piece of ticking. I love that kind of fabric and just a tiny metal, something, uh, some sort of tag that's very rusted. Uh, that was just a circle I had cut out of some paper. This here is from a textile sample. Just look at that fabric, the shade store. Oh, can you imagine having shades that look like that? Oh, wow. So that's that. And again, just stamps, tiny, tiny little playing card stickers. I've used those in a few places where I ended up with a tiny bit of space. That's one of the fun things about making these pages like shadow boxes. The pages don't have to be perfect. And as you start making lines around things, and honestly, um, I have this tile sample that's on a very heavy piece of like mat board or something. I used that as a straight edge because I don't have a ruler out here except for this thing that was turned into a some sort of a little shelf. I love this thing, but it's not always practical for measuring. I finally put the postcard in the old curiosity shop and it is definitely in photo corners so that I can pull that out and read the back. Uh, so some of the pages, like if I did a lot of work on one side, 
and some of the Sharpie or paint or whatever was bleeding through, or even the glue, I covered the other side with a magazine page or something that just ties in with the whole journal. Uh, and I think you've probably seen these pages. I, and I did go back and stain that one. I think the last time we were here, this time card was stained or distressed and this one wasn't. And I love this. So this is where I used a jar, you know, to make shapes with the ink. And look at the color that's turned into. It's almost got a silvery gray look. Very cool. And then we have the old letter under here. I have loved working in this journal. It, it has been so easy because the theme is really simple. I uh, just glue little things all in the book that are black and white with touches of red and use my stamp pads and my stamps. And it has turned into just really something beautiful. Now I see I've got some fabric standing up here at the corner and I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit under there. I know I had mentioned that I wanted to come back and sew around the edges with the sewing machine. I may still do that, but I may not. I don't know that I need to do that. What's interesting is that I've ended up with a secret pocket on the front. I, I did not mean for that to happen. It's where I basted through the fabric with just a needle and thread. I actually didn't even come all the way down. There's glue under here. And you can see the file folder that I used to make the journal. Anyway, I just love this, this journal so much. I still need to put my stamp on the back. But I love this. All right, I'm gonna stop for now and I will be back soon. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I've started on a new round of fun packs and I'm really excited about these. I feel like these are gonna be really fun. And uh, each one of these packs has got some beautiful butterfly fabric. And it is a reproduction. It's Williamsburg. I think it's called uh, Bassett Butterflies. I don't know if you can really see how pretty this is, but it's got paper in it. It's got cards. It's gonna have just some fun little trinkets and things. Each one has some sort of stem of yellow flowers. There's some playing cards and uh, some old flinch cards, but I am working on that and I hope to be back really soon. I hope everybody has a great day and bye for now.